No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today I'm in here with a street legend himself. Yeah, Gotti, how you feeling, man? I'm good, Doc. Chilling? Yeah, yes, for sure. How yes. are you? Uh, I, I seen you at uh, the YSL home, one of the many YSL homes, a few weeks ago. Right. Uh, but you went back to Atlanta, right? Right. And now you're back out in LA? Back out here. I actually um, went back to Atlanta, went to Miami to see my family, they just catch up, and then now I'm back. That's where your family's located at? So yes. you're not like an Atlanta guy for the most part? You're from Florida? Or? I'm born in Miami, but I moved to Atlanta when I was one. So like my whole childhood been in Atlanta. Really? So that's how it's like so connected. It's mm. wrong, yeah. So do you, when you go to Florida though, do you feel like a connection to there or do you consider yourself really like an Atlanta guy? It's like, it's really like I got the best of both worlds. So it's like my whole family in Florida, so that connection I always do. But it's like, I'm kind of standoffish. So it's like, um, more so, Atlanta's just home. Mm. But Miami is like where my roots at, if you get it, yeah. I got you. Um, okay, so tell me about your, your early life and like what you were like as a kid and shit. Man, like, well, you know, like, okay, everybody, a lot of people said they jumped out of the porch so early. Like, I probably jumped out of the porch when I was 13. So it's like everything was regular until that moment. Mm -hmm. And like, I kind of seen one of my homeboys in my breezeway shot. You feel me? Like, yeah, it got hit like four times. And it kind of like, it, it, it forced me to grow up ahead of my time. Really? Yeah. So it's like, everything was normal to then. Like, it was kind of like good grades. It wasn't that was just all A's, but it was like, okay, good grades. Well, B's and C's, a couple A's. But so seeing somebody that you were close with get shot at that young of an age, though, were you, because like obviously if you're really paying attention to rap and stuff like that, it's like you, you hear about people getting into incidents and stuff like that, but was this the first time that you had actually had something happen that like hit you close to home, realizing like, oh, this shit could happen to me, happens all the time, et cetera, and that just kind of changes your whole worldview? Yeah, that was like the first time, like mm. the first time. And it's like, damn, I had heard about it a lot. But actually seeing it and seeing him leading and you feel me, crying for help, like my mama actually called the police for him. Mm. You feel me? So it's like that was the first time I, I seen him. I was going outside to play, I seen him and went and told my mom and she came and called the police. Wow. Yeah. And so how did that change you? Like what what did you start doing differently after that point? Um, it's just like I I went with my normal routine, but it's like in my mind, it, it that stuff like that always hunted me. Mm. You feel me? Because it's like, it's close to home. Yeah. Definitely. But so did, it didn't like kind of get you spooked in terms of not wanting to be in the streets or did it make you more interested in that side it, of things? It, it, believe it or not, it kind of made me more interested in seeing like, well, I got to protect myself and my family. Because mm. I'm the youngest child on my mom's side. So it's like, my brother, he been gone since I was in eighth grade, he been in college and in, in NFL, like playing sports. So it's like me and my mom. So it's like anything that I can do, I have to protect my family. Like I'm what's the man of the house. Right. So you you had that feeling from a young age, like I'm in charge here. I'm going to have to protect my family. Yes. That's, that's a lot of responsibility for yes. a young guy. Yeah. I, I, that's, that was that was me. You feel me? Because it's like I, I always been like the youngest, even like in YSL. Like I'm one of the youngest or like even with. Just our street gang, or I always wanted the youngest. Like, I ain't never just home with a lot of people my age. Mm. So it's like I took that mentality to home, like home. What I'm seeing the older guys on the block do and take care of their family. I, I always wanted to be that person. Right. To provide. That makes sense. Um. So after that, you just sort of start getting wrapped up in more street shit. Is that how you would describe it, or like what 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 kind of shit really literally changed? Um. Well, like. I still play sports, you mm -hmm. feel me? So it's like sports was almost my savior till I end up getting jammed out, jammed up. And then it got on some like, okay, I play sports Monday through Friday and Friday through Sunday, I'm in the streets, like just, but it was like a dose of it. It wasn't just full, full ledge in the streets, but it just, um, I caught a case and they took my scholarships and then it was like, I'm all in. At what age? 16. 16, you had yes. scholarships for college, like you were gonna go to college? Yeah, I was gonna go to college, I had football scholarships. Really, and you were you were really good at football? Yes. Yeah. It's on YouTube, like it's documented, like I, I was ranked, you feel me, like out of top 200, like I was ranked, had schools like Georgia, Marshall, um, Tennessee, Middle Tennessee, Appalachia State, like a couple D1s, like TCU, and it just like, 
I called a case like when made one bad decision. What was the case? It was I could talk about it now, like because it's like it was a rape, like right. Well, you got accused of it. Accused of it. Yeah. Wow. So what was it? Was it like a party situation? No, <laughs> it was just like okay, I was popular because I I played sports, so I was one of the best on the team, and I was also rapping. So it's like I had the best of both worlds, and we pulling up school and business, or just you know how this young head big feeling yourself. So it was actually a, a girl who got transferred to the school, and like, okay, so she's like kind of fresh meat. So everybody at her, everybody at her, but like somehow she came for me, cause I guess she seen like I was one of the ones, and then I just remember walking her to class, and then I left. So after after I left, she was like, um, so we gonna go together? And I told her no. So all of a sudden, she just told another dude, and he went home and told his parents. The next day, they tried to come lock me up, but I ran out of school. Holy shit. Yeah. So you took off running? Were you on the run for a while? Or? No, I, I ended up turning myself in. It's like, I know I ain't, I ain't right. No, you feel me? Like, right. I ain't never had problems with women. You feel mm-hmm. me? Like, so it's, I turned, my mom made me turn myself in. I did like two weeks in Rice Creek on the South Floor. So it's like, that's like, I wreck. Like, it's a danger zone. Right. So that even woke me up to where it's like, uh-huh. I'll never be normal again. Right. Like, you- I'll never be normal. Like, I'm up here with, I'm 16 years old up here with real, like, killers, like, people with life sentences, and you feel me? Like, like you thought you knew what was going on on some street shit before, and now all of a sudden you're with everybody who really is is past the point of no it, return. Exactly. And I'm the, like I said, I'm always, like, one of the youngest. So I'm 16, 17. These dudes anywhere from 20 on up. So it's like, damn, like, I remember walking in the dorm and seeing – Two dudes fight as soon as I walked in. Mm. And it's like, oh shit, what am I supposed to do? Were you scared? Because I mean, you don't have any of your normal, like you got your homies when you're on the outside, yes. you're, you're just solo. <laughs> Ain't no cap, yeah, I was scared. Like, I'm scared, you feel me? But it's like, when you from the when you from that, you you know not to show that you're scared, mm. but you know like, just respect everybody. And if, if you provoke or if it come to you, that's when you have to handle your business. But not just walk up with your nose all up like, yeah, nobody ain't gonna do nothing to me. Or you feel me? You just, I just had to be smooth with. It. Did you end up having a fight like when you were in there during that short period of time? You have to prove yourself to any extent. No, a, a dude tried me, but when he seen like I was gonna stand up, then all the older dudes like, hell, nah, leave him alone. That's the youngin. Like, nah, nah, hell, nah, bro, pick on somebody on side. Uh-huh. But just like when you're in a situation like that, a person will test you. So it's like. I wasn't going. Like, I can't, because if I would have just went out bad or he let him pump me, then it would have opened the door for everybody else to do it. Mm-hmm. And I got a man, I'm going to the store, I'm getting my commissary. Like, I can't go like that. Right. You feel me? So did that case just go away? Like, did she not end up really trying to follow through with it? or? Nah, like, it, it stayed pending for, like, having a 10. It stayed pending for seven years. Seven? Just beat it. That's how I just knew it was some bullshit. And like, she was trying to take it to court the whole time. It was like. Like, I don't know. Like, after. Okay, I got out on bond. After that, she um she left the school. And I never heard from her. Like, she disappeared. But she went to a whole other school. I think she went to North Carolina and did the same thing to another dude. You feel Holy what I'm saying? fuck. Yeah. So it's like. That's what that movie is, Daddy's Little Girl. Like, that's some stuff, like, I, I, I'm I thinking that's some movie stuff. Like, uh-huh. but it's, it actually goes on. Right. So I end up going fed, and, when it, when, like, when you're in the feds, if you have an open charge, they won't give you no halfway house. Mm. So I had to hire a whole nother lawyer, and then they end up calling, like, you beat it. Like, I don't even know why this still was pending. Mm. It wasn't no evidence or nothing on the case. It was just what she said. That's so crazy that your dreams of playing sports could be totally crushed just by a fucking accusation. Yeah, like, and that's why, like, I have a couple homies in the NFL or NBA, and I just stay on them, like, bro, you, it ain't just for you, because that was my dream. So I'm like, bro, when you score, I score, like, you feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And they feel the same, about, same way about me. Like, bro, when you have a hit or you have a song that's trending, like, it's because they listen to the music, so it's, it balances each other out, but. That was my first love, like sports. Hey, what's up? How you doing? It's Yak Gotti, and I'm with No Jump. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Yak Gotti and Young Stone Life Records. You did YSL for life, you know what I'm saying?